If you want to speed up your workflow with the most magical After Effects shortcuts, keep watching because I'm going to show you my favorites. And I know you've heard this before, but there's actually something at the end you've got to see, so keep watching. Let's start simple. Select all your layers with Ctrl A, then hit U in your keyboard to open up all your keyframe properties. Magical, right? Hit U again to close them back up. But wait, there's more. If you select one or more layers, you can also double tap U quickly to open up all your animatable properties. Just goes to show, if you find the right button and tap it in just the right ways, After Effects can have multiple orgasms. I mean, functions. Multiple functions. Quick note by the way, if you're on Mac, anytime I use Control, just replace it with Command, because I'm not gonna tell you this every time. Because really, you've already made a big mistake buying a Mac. Fight me in the comments. Now this next shortcut is one of my favorites and it works especially well on my Windows desktop. So instead of twirling down your layer like an amateur with too much time on their hands to access your transform properties, you can simply hit A for anchor point, P for position, S for scale, R for rotation, and T for opacity. You can also stack these by hitting P for example and then holding shift and whatever letter you like. And look at that. And speaking of multiple functions, and be careful you don't function prematurely because this one is hot. If you add Alt and Shift before hitting any of these letters, you will automatically open and drop in a keyframe for that property like this. This is such a great shortcut and it seems like no one really talks about it. Anyway, before we finish with the transform property related shortcuts, I have one last banger for you. Let's open up everything on a shape layer by double tapping U. Now we can select any property and if we double tap S, we can solo that property for a quick way to stay organized and focused on the task at hand. Now let's speed run a few of these shortcuts. Control Shift and D splits a layer into two. Use your left and right brackets to trim a layer at the start or at the end. Hitting W gives you the rotation tool and you can quickly rotate any layer. Y gives you the pan behind or anchor point tool, allowing you to change the location of your anchor point and if you hold control at the same time, you can snap it onto points. If you have expressions on a layer, double tapping E opens them up. Then if you have a position animation like this, with your selection tool, you can hold control and alt to access your convert vertex tool to quickly add a bezier handle and curve to your animation. Now, if you haven't been getting multiple functions from all of this, perhaps you just need to add in some stimulation to that like button, if you know what I mean. For this final set of shortcuts, let's start with some keyframes. The next useful shortcuts that I want to show you are used to change our keyframe type really quickly. So let's easy ease one of our keyframes with F9 and then while holding control, we can change the keyframe back into a linear keyframe and if we click again, it becomes an auto bezier. We can also toggle between the two very easily by clicking again. Then if we hold control and alt, we can convert our keyframe to a hold keyframe with a click. Since we have all these keyframes already, another useful shortcut is to use the J and K keys, which allow us to easily jump between the visible keyframes on the timeline, like this. This can be very useful for character animation when using the pose to pose method, something I talk about in this video. Speaking of ways to move around the timeline, we can also move forward and backwards by a single frame by using control and left arrow or control and right arrow, like this. Also, if you add shift to that, you'll move the indicator by 10 frames. This can be very useful for setting specific or consistent timing across an animation. And there's a variation of this shortcut, which I think is really cool. So if you select a keyframe or multiple keyframes first, you can move them in the same way. So if we hold Alt instead of Control and use the left or right arrow, we can move the keyframes around by one frame. And then if we add shift to the equation, we can move the keyframes by 10 frames. I find this very useful, especially in cases where I want to move a keyframe by just one or two frames and using the mouse is just not as easy or precise. Finally, I've mentioned this one before in this short, but if you have an animation that has a shit ton of layers and you're struggling to find a specific layer, you can select it in your comp window and hit X and you will jump right to the selected layer in your timeline like magic. Now as a bonus, I want to talk about a term that I just made up 
called shortcut sequencing. But if you understand it, your productivity gains become limitless. But what is this super awesome, exciting and also life-changing concept I just came up with? Well, it's the idea that by connecting shortcuts one after the other, you can perform tasks at a speed only rivaled by, well, pretty much anyone who's made it into this meme. Like this battle part, for example. So let me demonstrate. Let's drop in a position keyframe, move 20 frames ahead, another position keyframe, bonus shortcut, shift and right arrow to move our shape, hold Ctrl and Alt to use our Convert Vertex tool to add a curve to our movement, select keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease. And there it is, the fastest animation you've ever made. Take that After Effects. So remember, you heard it here first, shortcut sequencing, trademark, patent pending. And that's it for my favorite shortcuts. Let me know which one was your favorite or tell me about a shortcut you love that wasn't included. This is my last video for the year, so I've got to give my program, the Motion Practice Quest, a shout out. Check it out below to level up your motion game. And remember to subscribe for more motion XP.